If you haven't heard, the Application Gateway V1 will be retired by September 2026. So we must migrate to the Application Gateway V2. Our first option works for both a public and private Application Gateway. Initially, you will have an Application Gateway V1 configured with a public or private front end or both. As a step one, you will run the migration script, which will create a brand new Application Gateway V2 with all your existing configurations for backend, HTTP, rules, and listener settings. During this step is where you will validate that the configurations are correct and that you're able to access your website through the new endpoint. As a step two, once validation is done during a planned maintenance window, you will update your public or private DNS to the new endpoint, either through a CNAME or a record update. We recommend you use CNAMEs wherever possible. This step will direct all your end users to the new application gateway v2. Finally, as a step three, after a successful cutover and a soak period, you can remove your application gateway v1. Now let's take a look at our second option using Traffic Manager, which is a great option for public application gateways only. Initially, you will have an application gateway v1 configured with a public front end. As a step one, a similar and similar to the prior scenario, you will run the migration script, which will create a brand new application gateway v2 with all your existing configurations, which you will validate and test accordingly. Step two is where this scenario is different. We will introduce the use of traffic manager profiles and its weighted routing feature, which will allow you to have more control over end user traffic cutover. In this step, we create a traffic manager profile and configure the application gateway v1 DNS label as an active endpoint with a weight of 100. We then update the public DNS for the website to point to the traffic manager DNS label. As a step three, we create a new endpoint for the application gateway v2 with a weight of one and as disabled. During step four, we enable the application gateway v2 endpoint still with a weight of one to redirect a low amount of users to the new application gateway v2. In step five, we distribute the weight of the traffic manager endpoints for application gateway v1 and v2 to have the end user traffic equally distributed between both application gateways. In step six, we reduce end user traffic to the application v1 endpoint to the minimum. On step seven, we fully disable the application gateway v1 endpoint. Finally, as a step eight, after a successful cutover and a soak period, you can remove your application gateway v1. Additionally, looking at it at the migration guide, you can see that there is a pricing consideration section. Here you will also see what is the cost efficiency that application gateway v2 brings. As you can see here, we have a three to one ratio with the application gateway v2 being more optimal in terms of supporting more traffic, more throughput, or the amount of websites it's hosting and the end user traffic to these websites. So what this means is that you can consolidate your standard application gateway v1, three of them into a single application gateway v2. If we navigate up in the migration guide, you will find a link to the PowerShell repo where this script exists. You will see this section right here under downloading the script. This will give you a link to the PowerShell gallery, and here's where you will find all the different versions of the script. In this case, as you can see in the screen, we have, um, it's, got, it's made out of three tiers, the classical web application and database, but um, we are not too interested on that. The application gateway is mostly uh, looking at the web tier. So here's the application gateway as we have configured it in Azure, it's a V1. It has a couple of listeners, one for HTTP, the other one with, uh, for HTTPS with an SSL certificate that we installed. It has two rules. One of them is relatively complex. It's a path-based rule, uh, choosing the backend pool depending on the URL. And it has another couple of components like two uh, health probes, two backend pools, we can verify now that our DNS resolution is going through application gateway v1. We can do a, a, a quick NS lookup 
here in um, any terminal and we will see first of all that uh, the resolution is going through traffic manager and second that the resolved name is the one belonging to application gateway v1 the next step is installing this script it will work easily if you do it in your local installation please be careful because there might be some incompatibilities between the modules you have loaded this is the command that we would issue as you can see, I have most of the stuff already in variables, so uh, it doesn't look too scary. When we run it, it and uh, it will start uh, copying it, and um, it will you the, the error you are seeing right now. It's because it tries to see whether the application gateway v2 object already exists. It doesn't, so this error is normal. So now uh, that it knows that it doesn't exist, it will be creating it. All right, and after fast forwarding, the copy process is done. The script finished creating the application gateway v2. Now we can go to the portal and verify that the application gateway v2 has been correctly created and that all of the configuration of the application gateway v1 has been ported. We can do a couple of quick checks. We can verify that the front ends are there, that the uh, rules are there that the um, listeners are there etc etc eventually we can do the ultimate check which is, which is verifying whether the application is working so for that we will need a public ip address we will copy that public ip address to uh to our, the clipboard and then we will just access directly the public ip address of the gateway and see what happens uh, of course the Certificate doesn't match anymore, so that's why, why we get the security message. But uh, we will uh, take our risk and come here and uh, everything works properly. So the script did a wonderful job. Now, after we've tested it ourselves, it's time to send some of our users to this new environment with the application Gateway V2. For that, as I was mentioning earlier, we will use Traffic Manager. In Traffic Manager, we already have the profile, the, the endpoint for application gateway v2 created. However, it's disabled. So at the, today, as we saw earlier, everything is going, all of the, our clients are going through application gateway v1. Uh, what we can do is we can enable the endpoint for application gateway v2, but with a low weight. In this case, you see that um, v2 has only a weight of one. So meaning 1% because uh, compared to the 100 weight of application gateway v1, it means that v2 will get approximately 1% of the traffic. We will not need uh, health checks for this. So uh, we will just start uh, sending some customers here. If everything proceeds okay, then we can continue increasing the weight. So in this case, you are getting most of your customers on the new environment. Whenever you're happy with the result, you can just disable application gateway v1, the application gateway v1 endpoint, so that all of your clients are going to v2. If for whatever reason, after a few days, you find out a problem, you can safely go back to v1 just by setting traffic manager configuration. So it's a really um, easy way of going back and forth uh, between both environments. Additionally, what you can do is uh, finally, after we have uh, disabled application gateway v1, we can do the same check we did at the very beginning and we can verify that traffic manager is actually sending us now through application gateway v2. Mm -hmm.